what a day. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Esther, Esther. Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. Esther chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. Esther chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. The title of the message comes from verse 16. If I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Esther chapter 4. Again, Esther spake unto Hattach and gave in commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast thee for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Verse 17, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Father, Lord God, we thank you for this Sunday, Lord, that we get to gather together out of local King James Bible Believing Church, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that you please fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help him to speak to us, Lord. Help him to deliver the message that, that you prepare for us, Lord. Help the brothers and sisters here to have an open heart to receive the word, Lord God, that we may change from inside out so that we may be a better Christian for you, Lord God. There are many lost souls in this world, sinners, that are on their way to hell, Lord God. We ask that you help us to give the love, give us the love for those lost souls, Lord God. Help us to have the fear of the Lord, Lord God. Uh, we're living in a, in a little bit say an age, Lord God. And help us not to be part of that lukewarm Christian, but to have the zeal and the love for you, Lord Jesus Christ, just as you had for us. Laying down your life, Lord God. Thank, Thank you, Lord. you for the precious blood that you shed on the cross at Calvary. Amen. Thank you for your blood that atones for all of our sins, past, <clears throat> present, and future. Thank you for resurrecting from the grave so that we may have the free gift of eternal salvation. And Lord Jesus, there's nothing more important than for you to come soon, Lord. We ask that you please come soon and take us up, Lord God. Call us up hither so that we may be with you in heaven to glorify you and to worship you because you are worthy to be praised and worthy to be worshipped for you are God. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for today for all of the mothers that, that we have, Lord God. We pray that you please bless them, Lord, and please be with them. And we pray in this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Esther is one of the most, you know, exemplary characters in the Word of God. You know, as as a queen, you know, of the most powerful empire during that time. You know, she did something that Christians can always, you know, be reminded of and learn from. It's one of those things where. Either you just make up your mind and do it, or you don't do it. I mean, she said, verse 16, if I perish, I perish. 
Like, if I die, I die. You know, it's like, that is a person who has given all of her will to God. Right? Esther is an interesting book. Nowhere you see God here. The whole entire book of Esther, you don't see the word God. And obviously, you know, we see the story of Esther, you know, the king Ahasuerus. You also have Mordecai and, you know, Haman. But, you know, it, it, it's a prophetic book. It talks about a lot of things that's going to happen in the future. But on this Mother's Day, I think we could really learn from Esther. Whether you're a mom who has sacrificed all your life to raising your children, or still do. Because, you know, when mothers are even in their 70s and 80s, their child always still looks like a little kid, right? You know, the things that they lectured them when they were like 10, 9 years old, they still lecture them when they're 50, 60, right? <laughs> hey, son, hey, daughter, you know, wipe your mouth after you eat, you know? Yeah. I mean... Did you do this? Did you do that? And they still care for him. I mean, mother's love is such an amazing thing where even though you know your child is guilty, you still have love for that child. You think they're innocent. I mean, you go beyond the normal reason of thinking because they love their children so much. But... Whether you're mother, whether you're man, your children, you have to make one thing clear always. You have to say, I'm going to do it for God no matter what. That's it. I mean, that's literally what Esther and especially learning from Mordecai. No matter what, I'm just going to do. If I die, I die. If I lose everything, I'm still going to do it. As we saw, she had a lot to lose as the queen. She could just die just like that. If you were in Esther's shoes, what would you do? Right? You are this powerful person. You have everything in the world that you want to desire. And someone comes up to you, says, you know what? You have to go. You have to go and risk your life. And at first thought, I don't know how you will feel about it, right? Why are you talking to me, you know? I mean, why should I do it? Right? Mordecai gave the answer. Right? I mean, Mordecai says, either you do it or not, someone's going to do it. But if you refuse to do it, your father's house and you will be destroyed. That's actually like God's, how God works. Yeah. You know, there's a phrase, right? There's a term, you know, next man up, right? When you're having a, you know, sporting competition, they just say next man up. Or even during work life, next man up. You know, because the previous person couldn't do it. God always has next man up, next person ready. It's up to you to be that best for God. You don't want to be known as a secondary option. Because if you refuse to follow God's will, what's going to happen? You won't, as, if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll never burn in hell. But you're going to lose your rewards, Right? You're going to have a horrible time at the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to be that next, second best for Jesus Christ. And I don't want to be second best for Jesus Christ. I want to be best for Jesus Christ. But many Christians, the whole world, especially the majority of the Christians during this Laodicean age, they are always second best for Christian. Who's best for them is always themselves. But you have to remember, if you don't choose God at every decision point in your life, 
there's another person who's going to take your space. There's, there's another person who's going to receive that glory, who's going to give glory to God, and who's going to receive that reward. We saw parables, you know, Luke chapter 19, parable of pound. Every single Christian has that one pound. You know, we have uh, two different famous you know, parables right there. One for pound and one for talent. Talent is for Jewish people. And then they actually have five, three. And they talk about, you know, if you don't serve the Lord accordingly, you burn in hell. But Luke is for saved Christians. And at the judgment seat of Christ, what you did for Jesus Christ, that's what you're going to be judged at. And that pound is Jesus Christ. Gospel of Jesus Christ. We all have it. Yes. So what are you doing with it? You use it, you're going to rule a lot of cities. As I said on Wednesday, if people in this room, if you don't even get a single city, man, that's shame on you. Amen. You have that pound. You have to do something about it. Yes. If you don't do something about it, you're going to be punished for it. Amen. God has given you every single opportunity, especially in a Bible-believing church. You have perfect Word of God, King James Bible. Yes. If you don't think so, you know, you don't believe in perfect God. Right. You have right doctrines. Amen. You know, it's like how the Holy Spirit moves and how we're learning and we're like fine-tuning it. We're bringing everything together. Like in 2 John, if you go through 7 through the rest of the chapter, it talks about people who's going to lose rewards in heaven. They, you know who those primary people are going to be? They're going to be liberal Christians. Right. Liberal, liberal Christians. They can handle the right doctrine and the perfect word of God. Amen. Those people are going to lose it. Like Billy Graham, for example. Yes. And, I mean, I don't know. If any of the popes ever gotten saved, they would have lost everything as well. Absolutely. Right? Perfect. So that's why I'm, I, I feel really bad. If you don't even believe in the perfect word of God, King James Bible, and you're out there doing your best, thinking that you're serving the Lord, but you don't believe in the perfect Bible that clearly points out everything in your life, sin, blessings, and everything, yes. and then you go up to the judgment, and then the Lord's like, hey, what happened? You didn't even believe my word wow. completely. Right. And then where's your heart at? Yeah. Like your heart has to be there. Like Esther, like her heart was sold out now. 100% for the Lord. Like, so point number one is that if I perish, I perish. You could do it if your heart is sold out to the Lord. 100%. It can't be 99%. It can't be 98%. It has to be 100%. It's a 100% conviction. When you're dealing with someone with 100% conviction, it's different. They have that, this, something like a power, like a supernatural type of power when general people see it. How can someone have such a conviction? For example, when we're preaching out on the street, they see our little children preaching bottom of their heart. And we're talking about kids in, you know, preschool to elementary school. But people are like, that's when they get really touched in their heart. They're like preaching, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know, Jesus saves, don't burn in hell. And that's from their heart. And that conviction comes from it. If you're not 100% sold out to Lord Jesus Christ right now, you cannot say, if I perish, I perish. Yeah. You can't get there. I can't get there if I'm 100% sold out. It's like someone comes to you and says, all right, go talk to Biden, right? And then tell him everything wrong with how they're treating Israel. Stand for Israel. Yes. You have no appointment, nothing. Just march through the White House, 
get through the security guard, just go. Tell him, hey, you know, I'm for Israel. Bless Israel. I mean, a lot of times, probably you're you going to go to jail, right? Yes. Yeah. Or unless you might get shot you know, <laughs> by those guards. But if you have conviction to do it, people do it. You know, one thing that is lacking from Bible-believing so-called Christian is that 100% conviction. I see all these protesters throughout the college campus. Yeah. They believe for the wrong thing. They stand for the wrong thing. They don't even know what they're talking about, right? If they were put in those countries, they'll be hanged already, or they'll be in front of a death squad, right? So they don't know what they're talking about. But they have that ignorant conviction. I mean, they fight against police. They fight against authority because that's what they believe in. And they don't care for some of them if they get expelled from school. Why? Because I believe for this cause. But as Christians, many times you are so afraid. You're so afraid of affairs of the world, your reputation, your status, your money, everything in between. You're like, I, uh, I have another person who could do it. You know, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, they're strong in faith. They could do it. But me, you know, I'm already doing a lot, right? I go to church, you know, I keep tight, and that's it. Wow. Is that really a person following God's will? No. I mean, you go to heaven, thank God, but you regret that life that you lived at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. And for who knows it, especially in millennium, you're not going to do anything, right? If you and I reflect on our life right now on this Mother's Day, where mothers, 100%, they're sold out to their children, yeah. right? Yeah. You know it. I mean, at one part of your life, I know, if, if, you, if you have like a, not the best relationship with your mother, and I'm sorry to hear that, you should reconcile, right? And especially if you're Christians, you should reconcile. But regardless, they... I guarantee you, when you're a little baby, you're pooping everywhere, right? Yeah. You know, they're the one with their father, hopefully, right? Yes. You know, took care of you. They fed you, right? Yes. They wanted what's best for you. Yes. And I guarantee you, they cannot do that half-heartedly. No. You know? When babies are first born, you have to take care of them 24-7. Yeah. Or, or they might just die. They, they might choke to death or, you know, they might have, you know, a certain illness. So you have to watch them 24-7 and you can't do that without all your heart in it. When you are serving the Lord, you have to put all of your heart into it. Amen. Sometimes we forget that because our life is so busy. We have affairs of this world. Devil's constantly attacking you. Your flesh and the world is just bombarding you with so many other stuff. But each moment... You have to realize, man, am I really living in the will of God? Am I giving my all to the Lord? Right? If I perish, I perish. Am I, can I really say that today? Right, let's, let's see a good example. Let's go not too far away. Let's go to Job. Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. You and I could know for sure that Job gave his all to God. I mean, he made one of the greatest testimonies when he lost everything. I mean, let's go to, before we go to Job chapter 13, verse 15, let's go to Job chapter 1. Let's look at verse 20, starting from verse 20 to 22. Job, I could tell you, he, he would have been like Esther. If he had to perish, he would just say, I perish. And we see it. Let's look at chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He lost everything right now. Think about it. I mean, wealthiest man. He lost his family, you know, I mean, children. Verse 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. 
The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not and nor charged God foolishly. I mean, what an amazing person, right? Yeah. I mean, think about it. If you were put in that shoes, who's like the richest person in this world right now? You know, some, some person in Europe? You know. And then say you're the richest person in this world and you have a loving wife and you have you know, 10 children and you have everything. Overnight, you lose every single thing. You lose all your possessions. You lose your family. And your wife just leaves you, right? And what would you do? Are you going to be able to say, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither? The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Or are you going to be cursing God? Or are you going to be like, I mean, your normal natural reaction is, why, right? Yes. You probably would, first thing you would probably ask is, why me? You know? Why me? And then once you start asking, why me? And then you're going to start complaining, right? You're going to complain to the Lord. I mean, or you're like, God, why me? Why did this happen to me? Right? Job didn't say, why me? Yeah. Job just said, Lord did what he had to do, and I accept that. You know, I give glory to God for that. Let's go to verse, chapter 13, verse 15. Chapter 13, verse 15. And the Bible says in Job chapter 13, verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He says, you know what? If it's God's will that I die, it's fine. It's fine. I mean... How many people have that kind of conviction? Like you're so sold out. I mean, think about you know all the wars. The you know if you look at the history wars, right? The conquering you know emperors usually had group of people who weren't afraid to give their lives to them, and that those are the countries usually actually won. Literally, I forget. I mean. I, it's kind of hazy. You know, there was a story. I don't know if it was uh, Alexander the Great or yes. Xerxes or, yeah. He said, Alexander said, okay, jump off the cliff. And the guy jumped off the cliff to his death. Yes. Like, they're like, okay, king's word is the final word. And we, a lot of times Christians forget, right? Yeah. King of kings, his word is final word. He goes, jump off. He, they just jump off. Yes to show how faithful they are. And I think the, the enemy got so scared, you know, by their conviction, you know, they just, they didn't even fight. When did you ever have that kind of conviction in your life? Wow. Not just a Christian life, just a normal life, just as a human being. Did you ever have that kind of conviction where someone's final word is final word? That's it. That's why... A lot of marriages break because you have no regard for final words, right? Yes. Till death do us apart. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That is a command. Till death, you have to obey those things, right? Yes. If you don't, you're going to just become a secondary Christian out there. And it goes back to first thing where you have no 100% conviction. You know, they say you have no backbones, you know, you don't, you don't have anything. Yeah. Then you can't do things for God. You got to be passed over. You know, the Lord's like, okay, I, I'm going to give you chance after chance after chance after chance. Because the Lord's such a gracious and merciful God. He's going to give you chances to live in his will. If you say no, 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 give excuse after excuse, after excuse right? You know, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, you know. I'm too poor, I'm too poor, you know. I'm too hurt, I'm too hurt, you know. I mean, again, we could all empathize, right? But Jesus Christ went through every single thing, but he didn't complain. Amen. He just went through it. Died for you and me, his enemy, yes. right? Because he was just obeying the final word, yes. right? 
then you and I have to have that conviction, just like Esther, we just got to do. If God said in his Bible, then you're saying, what do we do? Just do what the Bible says. 100%. If the Bible says, you know, abstain from appearance of evil, just abstain from it. Yes. You know? Preach the gospel in season, out of season. You just do it. Yes. Right? It's like, you don't have to find reasons not to do it. That's what I'm saying, right? You know, a lot of people, you and I, we get into this state. We always try to find reasons not to do it. That's true. I mean, time to clean up the room. Tonight. (laughs) Do it right now. If you could do it, right? You know, children, chores. Uh, After I play this game, you know, do it at that point. You know, if every husband did what they were supposed to do right away, there won't be any fights. Yeah. Literally, you will have a happy wife, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it, you know. Because you're the head of the household. Stop. I mean, the first word you shouldn't have come out of your mouth is like, oh, what about my wife? You are the man of the house. You know, <laughs> act like it, right? And yeah. then wives will submit themselves to you, just like the Bible says. You know, just one thing that you have to learn as a Bible believing Christian is that if you have that 100% conviction in your heart, you never wait. You don't wait. Like, you have that conviction. You know, Holy Spirit is, you know, convicting you. You gotta go talk to that person. You know, tell them about Jesus Christ. You know, do it. At least give them a track, right? And then you're like, ah, uh, no, not today. I play soccer, Mother's Day picnic, sprain my ankle. It's hard for me to walk. You know, I don't want them to see limping, right? You know, and the next day you hear they passed away. And it happens in life, right? It happened to me. Two weeks later, I mean, this guy who was at work just hung himself in the backyard and died. You know? I mean, I got to be accountable for him at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm never proud of that, right? And I had the opportunity, right? What happened? Because I didn't go through with my 100% conviction. You start with the conviction, and second point is that you have to put it into action right away. You have to put it into action right away. What did Esther do in her part? She asked Mordecai and all the Jews to pray. Pray. First step of action is you have to pray. Don't just go and do it. You pray and you do it. Okay, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I gave all my all to you. I'm, you know, I want to stay like this. Now you're fired up. You have zeal and passion. right? Don't skip that. Next part, you have to pray and then you do it. Lord, I'm going to go out there and street preach today at, you know, this busy intersection, you know. But you don't pray. You just go and then you get into a huge fight with somebody, Satanist or, you know, and then you get hurt and you're in the hospital. You're like, oh, I, I suffer from my Lord. I suffer from my Lord. And the preacher asks, did you pray? No, I didn't pray. What do you think happened, right? So you have to pray. I mean, there are certain things in life. And this was life or death for Esther. She asked for, she prayed, and then she also fasted. All the Jews did. Certain times in your life, you have to fast as well, right? Sure. You know? I mean, there are certain troubles that come along your way. It's such a huge burden. That's why, you know, you fast, right? If you haven't fasted in your life, you know, because of, you know, certain things going on in your life, you know, maybe you've been okay, you know. But sooner or later, if Lord tarries, there's going to come a significant event in your life. You're going to need to pray and fast, right? And that's why the Lord said, right? So you have to understand that I need to pray, pray, and pray. And then I go take action. Yes. And then that's how you're going to make it work. Don't stop at first, though. A lot of people just stop at their first one, first point, right? I want to do something for the Lord, and I'm 100% sold out. And you know how our Lord is? He'll test you right away. He'll test you 
right after you leave this door today. You know, a lot of times, man, sometimes the testing comes so quickly. I don't have gas in my car. I have to go to the gas station. And Lord's like, hey, look around. There are lost souls everywhere, right? Empty pumps everywhere. <laughs> you could put a track there, or you could go. Usually when people are pumping gas, if they have to pump gas, like the full tank, they have to do it at least a few minutes. If it's slow pumps, they might be there for like 10 minutes, yeah. right? And that's a great opportunity for you to talk to them. Oh, yeah. Give them a track and just talk. If they don't want to hear, go to the next person. If they don't want to hear, go find empty pumps and just, you know, leave a track somewhere, right? So that kind of conviction, that kind of, you know, leading of the Holy Spirit will happen. Because you said, Lord, I'm sold out to you. I'm going to preach the gospel to every creature in this world. And the Lord said, okay, let's test you. And it happened. But if you pass that test, next time it gets easier, 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 and easier. Yes. And you're actually going to go through it. Again, don't just do it right away. You pray. Pray. You know, do that Nehemiah prayer, Nehemiah chapter 2. Just pray before you do it. Right? Even anything that you do in life, you pray before you do it. We forget it, right? You know, I think Brother Richard brought up a point yesterday. You know, sometimes, you know, we get hurt during competition, but do we pray, right? Some people say they pray and they still got hurt. So, you know, you know, it happens, right? You know, but some people don't even pray and you get hurt. I mean, that's kind of on you, right? It's like you're driving and then you get into accident and you get tickets, right? And the first question is, like, did you pray, right? Like, if you haven't, I mean, what do you expect, right? Yeah. You know, you're playing with fire. So you, that's the first thing you have to do. And there's a, you know, one of a very interesting character in the Bible by the name of Joab, right? He just was like, you know what? Let God do what he does. That's it. I mean, that is actually a great attitude. Let God do whatever he wants to do, whether it be good or bad, right? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 10. 2 Samuel chapter 10. 2 Samuel chapter 10. Once your heart is sold out for the Lord and you pray and you're going to take actions, now you leave everything in God's hand. You could confidently say it. You could have a 100% faith. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. So, I mean, they're, they're, in, they're going to be in a battle with Syrians or Ammon. And verse 12, Joab says, be of good courage. You know, brethren, I mean, you should always have a good courage when you're doing something for the Lord. Don't be shy about it. You know, it's not you who's doing it. It's the Lord who's doing it through you. Verse 12, be of good courage and let us play the man for our people and for the cities of our God. I mean, this guy, whatever you want to say about him, he, his cause, you know, was for the people and the cities of his God. And next one, and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Man, what a statement. You know what? I die in the battle. If that's what the Lord wants it to happen, that's good. Right? But he had that conviction that one of them, Syrians or Ammon, they're going to defeat them. And at the end of the day, the Lord gave him victory. Because Lord, once you put it in his hand, he's going to do whatever he wants to do whether it's good or bad, but you could always confidently say, the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Man, I, know, I wish all of our Christian life is always like that. I'm like, Lord, you know, do that which seemeth good to you. you know? yeah, man, if I have to get hurt today to give you glory, just do it, right? I mean, that is a strong statement. Yes. If I had to die, Lord, for your glory, I'd do it. But 
Some people just say it, like politicians say it, right? Yes. Just to get people's votes. But these characters in the Bible, they meant it, yeah. literally. Just like those you know, soldiers for Alexander, they meant it. Yeah. They just did it. And then let's finish with, finish with one more example. Let's go to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. So this day, let's check our hearts, everyone. No. Are you really 100% sold out to the Lord? And if you are, and if you have desire, and if you have been, or if you've been confessing, have you been praying before the next step? And if you have prayed, then just do it. Take that action. Let everything in God's hand, right? You keep someone track and they spit on your face, which we'd ha- it happened before in the ministry. It happened. Lord gets all the glory, right? If they punch you in the face, so what? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I mean, that's a great testimony, honestly. You don't have to get punched on it. I mean, if you, they don't, if you don't want to, you could fight back. This is, you know, it's defense is okay, right? But you're like, you know what? I want to get more rewards in heaven, you know? You know, I'm just going to get beat up, right? You know? I mean, certain guys probably can't handle it. My, you have self-defense, so they hit you first, you know, you could fight back, right? But those things do happen in the ministry and in your life, Christian's life. You know? Why? Because at that point, you have sold out 100% to the Lord. And you are praying, and then you let Lord do everything in your actions. You won't even get to that level if you have never been sold out to the Lord, if you even haven't been praying, Right? You could be that troublemaker. You, you yourself drinks. You yourself do drugs. You yourself smoke. Just go to a bar and start telling people, Jesus saved, get saved. And then nobody wants to hear you because you have a bad testimony. They beat you up, you know. And then no one gets glory in that, you know. But if you are doing it the right way, you know, God's going to get all the glory. Let's go to, now we have a young man, you know, three young Jewish men, right? They refused to worship the golden image. Let's see their testimony, verse 16. Daniel 3, verse 16. Let's go with 15. So Nebuchadnezzar is talking. He's angry, you know. Like verse 13, he said, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not afraid to answer thee in this matter. One thing about people who's 100% sold out, when you see mothers who's 100% sold out for their children, they're not afraid. A lot of times they're like, how can she say that, right? How can she say that, you know? Because... They love their children, and they have all the courage in the world. Nothing's going to stop them. Verse 17, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Verse 18, but if not, if if we burn up in this fiery furnace, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. No matter what happens, I'm serving our God. We're serving our God. No matter what happens, whether we live or whether we die, it's in God's hand. And that's the type of Christian life you and I should be living. you got to put everything out there, all out there. You know, we want the Lord to come back today, right? We want the Lord to come back right now. Even so come Lord Jesus. Last prayer in the Bible, Revelation 20 to 20. We want the Lord to come back. Then don't you want to be found faithful? Again, it's not like suddenly you go out there 24-7 witnessing. No. Whatever you're doing each day of your life, you're doing it faithfully to the Lord. Again, it's simple, right? Simple message, right? Be sold out to the Lord, all of your heart. Pray and put it into action right away. Let's pray. Dear Father, you know, we remember 
our mothers this day on the Mother's Day. Some of us got saved through them. Some of us found the right Bible through them and the truth. Some of us might have issues, but Lord, you know, they're mothers and they have that love. And you actually demonstrate those love to us and the qualities of great mothers. Help us to be appreciative of our mothers, be thankful, not taken for granted. And Lord, and just like Esther had that conviction and then praying, praying and then praying into action, help us to just do that, Lord. It's such a simple concept, but we don't do it. That's why we live a defeated Christian life. But some of us had that victory in the past, but help us to get it back, Lord, by getting right with you and just starting over. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day, be with everyone, and especially if anyone who's not saved, here or listening, pray that today will be the day of salvation, Lord. And I pray that you'll heal everyone going through illness, anything else in life, Lord. Help them to get well so that they could be back and serve you. I pray that you bless the rest of the day and all the rest of the services. And even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.